Come, let us worship in the holy of holies. Come, let us give the Lord our praise. Sing a song of joy before him. Magnify and glorify the Lord. For he Let's worship, come let's worship him. Come let's worship, let's worship. Come let's worship. Come let us worship in the holy of holies. Come let us give the Lord our praise.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Greencastle Baptist Church, the Church Under the Cross online worship experience. It is our prayer that the grace, peace, and love of God abides with you. Greencastle Baptist Church is located at 4970 Murphy Lane in Louisville, Kentucky. Thank you for joining and viewing our online worship experience. Let's join today's service. We now ask you to turn your attention to the screen for the morning announcements. Welcome family and friends to Greencastle and thank you for joining us in person and online. These are your morning announcements. And it's a new year and there's a new day to keep on your calendar. Noon day Bible study will now be on Wednesday. This will be a permanent change. So join us every Wednesday at noon and at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study. Also, join us for the men's Bible study every second Saturday at 9 a.m. and the women's Bible study every third Saturday at 11 a.m. More information can be found on the church website at www.greencastle.org on the events page. And if you find yourself in need of prayer, please go to our website and on the homepage, look for the prayer request tab to submit your prayer requests to the church office. And for those wanting to join, you can now go online on the homepage and select I want to join to become a member of Green Castle. And we invite everyone to join us in celebrating a new chapter at Green Castle Baptist Church. Mark your calendars for April 13th through the 14th to be a part of the pastoral installation of the Reverend Darian A. Waite. Join us with our special guests which will include the Reverend Raphael G. Warnock of Ebenezer Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia at the installation service on Saturday, April 13th at 11 a.m. Then join us on Sunday, April 14th at 11 a.m. for worship service with our guest speaker, the Reverend Dr. Willie Francois III of Fountain Baptist Church in Summit, New Jersey. You can now go to the church events page to find information on how to register via the Eventbrite link. And due to an expected large crowd, we kindly ask two car families to attend in one vehicle and encourage all attendees to carpool as much as possible. Same God, a new thing. We cannot wait to celebrate with you. In church family, we are so blessed to be celebrating our 155th year as a church. Join us for our church anniversary on Sunday, April 28th at 11 a.m. as we celebrate our church anniversary with Reverend James R. Pitts as our guest speaker. Be the church is our theme and we encourage and ask everyone to wear green on that Sunday. We hope to see you at the celebration. And are you willing to serve? The ushers ministry is in need of volunteers. We are also in need of youth volunteers to join us on the second Sunday for Youth Sunday to usher. If you are interested at all in participating in this ministry, please contact Brother David Wills. And last month, we observed the National Autoimmune Disease Awareness Month with events hosted by our Greencastle Health Ministry. Please stop by in the hallway today to take the quiz on all the information learned during the month and for a chance to win a prize. If you missed the event last month, then there is a recap video on the church website. 
we extend the invite to everyone to join us every Tuesday at 8.15 p.m. via Zoom for our online prayer call. Information can be found on the church website on the events page on how to join the Zoom call. Now we will worship through giving. There are several ways to give. You can give online by going to www.greencastle.org. Or if you are in person today, there are designated baskets at the back of the church where you can place your offering upon entering and exiting the worship center. Additionally, you may drop off your offering during church business hours during the week. These conclude our morning announcements. Have a blessed day, church family. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today, our morning hymn congregation song is Blessed Quiet. Blessed Quietness was written by Manny P. Ferguson in 1897. I got to thinking that how fast the pace of life is today is compared to 1897. Then I read that Miss Ferguson got her inspiration from Psalms 4610, which reads in part, be still and know. Then I said, I get it. Okay, let us stand and sing all five verses of Blessed Quietness.
Good morning, Greencastle. Good morning. How many of y'all came in the door? You're not waiting for your favorite song, but you just came to praise him. I know as things have happened this week, and I think about the tornado in my life that hit on my street. So today could have been another celebration. It could have been my home going service. But instead, I have another opportunity to praise him. Now that's just my story. I don't know what yours is. Can you think about this week? Just take a minute and think about it as the week is gone. Is there anything that you can think about that God did? That you know it wasn't nobody else. It wasn't because you've been so good, kind, and perfect. But it was because of his grace and mercy that brought you here another day. Does anybody have that testimony? Is that just mine? Is that just mine? All right. So because of that, I may not have another chance. And I know I can talk about Juanita this morning. I've messed up, but he gave me another chance. I messed up again, but he gave me another chance. I messed up again. That's just today. And he gave me another chance. I messed up again, and he gave me another chance. I messed up again. I can go on and on. That's just me. I don't know about you, and I'm just talking about the last hour. So I'm thankful for another chance to praise him. I have this moment. I don't know what's going to happen in the next moment, just like I can say this week. I had no clue a tornado was going to come. But in God's infinite wisdom, he does, he's sovereign, and he does what he does. And we were able to even see his grace and mercy in the midst of the tornado. We can see his power. So for that, I'm going to praise him. Am I alone? Anybody going to praise him with me? Am I alone? Can I see some hands?
blessed Savior. something new today before we have the welcome today. Uh, we want to recognize all, put that slide up, all of the birthdays for the month of April. Then we realize we want, don't want to forget everybody. We started it today. We're going to recognize everybody January through April. So everybody born in January, February, March, that's me, and April. Please stand. Please stand, and we're going to wish, sing happy birthday to our members. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy birthday to you and praise God for one more year. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Pastor Way said, that's half the church. <laughs> but it was good to see you all standing up. And so now my assignment is to welcome all of our visitors, all of our first time visitors. Will you please stand so that we can acknowledge you this morning? All right, well, it's all family then. Amen, amen. All right, family. Since it's just family, we got some work to do, right? Amen, amen. So we can see some visitors. And if you're joining us online for the first time, we welcome you, and we pray that your day is going well. And now, we would like to read our scripture and prayer, but keep these names in your hearts and minds. People on our special prayer list, Deetra Warfield, amen, amen. Thea Peaks, mm -hmm. Chauncey Bender, yeah, 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 yeah. the Johnson, Taylor, and Pearson families, mm -hmm. Sam Bell, and those affected by the tornadoes. Amen, amen, amen. Thanking God in the midst of it all, no lives were lost. Amen. Our Father controls the wind, he also extends grace. Amen. And now will you join me as we read our scripture this morning? It comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10 from the English Standard Version. And it reads, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us 
in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to those who read and study and do his most holy word. And now let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the new mercies that were seen this morning. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here to worship and praise you. You deserve all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Lord, we thank you that you've allowed Greencastle to reach this moment. What a beautiful moment it is in the church history. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing right now. It's a new day, a new time, but you are the same God. Lord, you're a God who's gracious. You're a God who is compassionate. You're a God who is kind. You're a God who is merciful. You're a God who is a forgiving God. And we thank you, Lord. In spite of us, you still show us love. You are still blessing and keeping us. So we thank you for those names that were mentioned and all the names that have not been mentioned. But you already know how to work out the situation. You already know to give us what we need. You already know all things, and you're an all-powerful God. So we thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that we can put our trust in you. We cannot trust what we see sometimes. We cannot trust other people, but we can always put our trust in you. God, we thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace in the middle of sickness. Peace in the middle of desperation. Peace in the middle of sometimes when we're depressed. Peace in the middle of when we're going through. Peace in the middle of a storm, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're a God that will keep us. Lord, we're asking that your Holy Spirit will touch every heart that is within the sound of my voice. Open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our hearts to receive a touch from you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this week we are preparing for installing our pastor. We give you praise this morning for the wonderful things that you're going to do. And we ask that you continue to sustain every single person that has helped out with the installation process. Lord, some of them may be a little tired, but they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for the glory of you. So give them strength this week. Give them your power this week that all will work out. We thank you, Lord, for all those who will travel this way. We're asking for your traveling grace upon them. We're asking that you work everything out all the planning, all the preparation will be done according to your will and your purpose and with your grace in mind, Lord. We thank you for all those who will be on the program, Lord. May everything work out so that we can just praise you and have a wonderful and glorious time during the worship service. So now as you prepare our hearts for this worship service. We ask that you lift up our pastor. Give him strength. Give him good health as he brings the word with power this morning. We thank you for the ears that will hear it. And as we receive that word on this first Sunday of the month, may we, we remember what Jesus did for us how he shed his blood for us. By the blood, by the blood, we are changed, we are healed, we are delivered, we are saved. And so we thank you for the blood. 
and we thank you for Jesus. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Look, we got a lot of room in the aisleways. Anybody been blessed? Hey. <laughs> Little song we sing says, every time I turn around, yeah, yeah. he keeps blessing me. Anybody feel like that? Yeah. Testify that in your life? Come on, every time I turn around, he keeps blessing me. Yeah. Now when you praise it, let's get the praises up. The praises go up. 
you. God blessed you. Juanita already told you. We just had a tornado. What was in her neighborhood could have been yours. God bless you. Can you just turn around? Every time you turn around, God's bless me every time I turn around. He's blessing you.
sitting down because you really don't understand that if Jesus wanted to Jesus could have gotten down from that cross but he made the decision to stay upon the cross to carry the world's sins for you and for me can we praise God that every day Jesus made a decision that Jesus had us in Jesus' mind. When Jesus could have gotten down, instead Jesus chose to get up. And because he got up, we have life and life more abundantly. Because he got up, we have another chance. Amen. Amen. And amen. My mind. He decided to die. So you don't understand. There are decisions being made in the heavens every day. I thought about the tornado that passed through this week. And I thought about how there was a decision that was made in the heavens. That your life would be spared. And that the only damage that you may have is to property and not to your person. If you can't praise God that a decision was made on your behalf that you are able to sit in this sanctuary when you could have been ascending into heaven this past week, I don't know what to tell you. Can we praise God together? Amen. 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 You all may be seated. You see, we're still in the Easter season. Just because Easter passed this past Sunday doesn't mean we don't still celebrate the resurrection. And so we praise God today that Jesus decided to die. If you would, in, in the spirit of the continued Easter season, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, and verses 21 through 26. Acts chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, and verses 21 through 26. And the New Revised Standard Version reads, In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Verse 21, so one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two people. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice and Matthias. Everybody say Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may take your seats. Beloved, I want to invite you this morning, the first Sunday after the resurrection, to journey with me as we explore the subject, where and who. Where and who. Beloved, when I'm not sermonizing or spending time with my family or even sleeping, one thing I love to do in my time of solitude is read blogs. Uh, and I know some of you can attest to this, that there is a blog out there for every kind of person. Uh, I love all kinds of blogs, fragrance blogs, sports blogs, even music blogs, but perhaps my favorite are blogs that deal with psychotherapy and behavioral sciences. <laughs> I know that my favorite blog should be on the Bible or biblical interpretation, but to effectively preach to and pastor God's people. Yes, you need to know the Bible, but you also need to know about human behavior. You need to be concerned about the mind and the spirit. It is the late Reverend Dr. Calvin Otis Butts III who said that education and faith are the Tigris and Euphrates of our liberation, twin rivers at the source of our redemption. And so I say all of this to say, yes, I love a good blog that can get beneath the surface, and there are many out there that do it well, but none have me as spellbound as this license therapist out of Berkeley, California. Her name is Annie Wright. And recently she published a blog entitled A Therapist Shares Eight Things to Look For in a Life Partner, where she explores if marriage is where you want to land, then those certain characteristics that you ought to look for in the person who you want to marry. Uh, Wright begins listing the eight things out one by one. That person should be someone who is growth and learning oriented. Uh, they should be someone who isn't afraid of the tough things in life. They should be someone who is a good forgiver, but who is also a good friend, and so on and so forth. Uh, and while this particular blog is interesting, it, it is not the content I want to highlight this morning, but it's her ability to understand where people want to be that helps her guide you toward who needs to come along with you on your journey. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I told you that Annie Wright is the only person who has a grasp on where people wish to be and who needs to come along for that journey. In fact, decades before Annie Wright hit the scene, it was Howard Thurman, that profound and prolific theologian who once said that there are two questions we all should ask ourselves. The first is, where am I going? And the second is who will go with me. And beloved, as we reflect on our lives, perhaps these are two questions we need to constantly consider. Where am I going and who will go with me? In fact, these are the two questions that I believe the 120 believers are pondering in our text today. After the crucifixion on Calvary, after their hope died when Jesus was hung, I believe they were left asking themselves the same questions. Where are we going? And who will go with us? They were left with these questions because their answer left when he ascended into heaven. Yeah. 
If you asked anyone in the upper room that day prior to the crucifixion, where were you going and who was going with you? Their answer to both of those questions would have been Jesus. Why? Because the day they decided to leave everything for Jesus, Jesus then became everything to them. Jesus became their compass and their companion. He became their roadmap and their rabbi. They went wherever Jesus went and they embraced whoever Jesus embraced. And even when they did not understand why Jesus did what he did, they trusted Jesus as the doer more than they trusted the deed that was being done. And beloved, even today, when you decide to become a disciple of Jesus, what you're really declaring is I'll be disciplined to go wherever Jesus needs me to go. Do whatever Jesus needs me to do. Why? Because of who Jesus ought to be in your life. And because of who Jesus is in my life, I don't need an explanation, nor do I need the entire itinerary because I trust who is leading me. Therefore, For if I trust who is leading me, then I can trust where I am going. And is there anybody in here who knows that following Jesus ain't been no crystal stair? I haven't always had the answers. I didn't always know the way. I didn't always know how things would turn out. But when I look back over my life, I can say that Jesus has never let me down. No matter how dim the situation or how discouraging the circumstance, Christ has always covered and carried me through it all. And through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I learned to trust in God. I may not have known where I was going, but I always knew who I was going with. And as long as I held on to who I was going with, where I was going was always going to be taken care of. Can we praise God that that he has always been trustworthy? And that Jesus has always held your hand and pulled you to where you needed to go. Because there will come a time when Jesus disappears. And you'll have to depend on his promise even if you can't trace his presence. We know the end of the story, but the believers in the upper room are still anticipating the promise to be fulfilled. They are waiting on Jesus' promise to come to fruition. Those gathered in the upper room are hopeful in a hopeless situation. Who they have been traveling with is gone. And where they thought they were going has been compromised. Not only is Jesus' absence being felt, but the ambiguity surrounding their next move is starting to seep in. At one point, they knew where they were going. And they knew who they were going with. But now they find themselves trying to make sense out of a nonsensical situation. And I have a question for you this morning. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in the upper room when you had an entire plan mapped out? A plan that included where you were going and who was going with you. Where everything in your life was right side up only for something to turn it upside down. Where you had to make sense out of a nonsensical situation. Try and comprehend the incomprehensible or explain the unexplainable. Where there is more doubt than reassurance more sleepless nights than joy-filled days. Have you ever been in the upper room? Because if not, the upper room is coming. And after all the loss and pain you've 
endured when it comes. It'll make you sit and ask the questions, where am I going? And who is going with me? Uh, that's what these believers are wrestling with this morning. Jesus is no longer with them. And the Holy Spirit has not yet come. They thought Jesus was going to restore Israel. They thought that he was going to overthrow the empire and overturn the law. They thought they knew where they were going and who was going with them. But they learned something in the upper room that day that I pray we all learn today and that is when you choose to walk with Jesus where you are going and who is coming with you hardly ever looks like where you envisioned and who you envisioned it with uh, from the very beginning of their discipleship journey, Jesus made it clear that where the disciples were called to go was not to the palace. But where he was calling them to go was toward persecution. That being a disciple is not about gaining popularity, but it's about accomplishing God's purposes in this world. And when where God is calling you is to accomplish God's purpose, then you ought to be purposeful about who you bring along for the journey. Everyone can't go where God needs you to go. Everyone isn't equipped to do what God needs to be done. And like any good Christian, what you'll do is pray and ask God to send you the right people. You'll do what they did in our text and ask God to send you people with the right heart and the right intentions and God will answer your prayer and delivered onto the front porch of your life will be the people you prayed God would send. But the people who you prayed God would send will not always look like what you thought you prayed for. Because the people that Jesus prayed for and the people that the disciples prayed for in the upper room, out of these people that they prayed for, they ended up with Judas and Matthias. And God understands that we all need a Judas and we all need a Matthias. And Peter does what many of us do as we discern who needs to come with us on the journey. Peter begins to think about where the disciples were going and who was with them when they were there. And he couldn't help but think about what Judas had done. And beloved, as he thinks about where they currently are and who is currently with them, he tries to make sense out of why Judas didn't make it to the upper room. And the way he tells the story is quite fascinating. And I want us to pay close attention to what Peter says. Peter, as he is making sense of Judas's absence and betrayal, says, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled. In other words, it, it is Judas's fault why Jesus was arrested. And because it was Judas's fault, that's why his share in this ministry had to end. And beloved, I come to tell you that we all need a Judas. We all need someone to blame, someone to throw under the bus, someone who everyone can dislike because it is common that as you pray and seek God on where you are going to begin to reflect deeply on where you have been. And when you think about where you have been, then it's easy to pinpoint where Judas was. 
It becomes therapeutic to call out Judas's wrongs. It is life-giving to cast judgment on Judas. It's even comforting to form defensive walls because of what Judas did. It got quiet in here. But if you're not careful, sometimes the trauma of where you have been if not dealt with properly, can hinder you from stepping in to where you are going. Because not only do we reflect on where we have been when we're seeking God on where we are going, but we also reflect on who was with us back then when we're seeking God on who needs to be with us right now. And just as where you have been can hinder you from stepping into where you are going, who was with you back then can hinder you from trusting who needs to be with you right now. And as you wrestle with God, questioning where am I going and who is going with me, you ought to be truthful about where you have been and who was with you when you were there. My mama used to always tell me there are three sides to every story. You have your side, you have their side, and then you have the truth. And if we let the truth set us free this morning, there are certain things we've been through and certain people we are no longer around and we've only digested one side of the story. We've only told one side of what happened. And we've convinced ourselves that the one side we've told is the only side that matters. But the freedom to live into your new where with your new who starts with being honest about where you've come from and who you came through it with. Because even as we read Peter's explanation for why Judas didn't make it to the upper room, The one portion of the story that he manages to omit is the part that he fails to own. Judas' betrayal did lead to Jesus' arrest. His betrayal was foretold by David. But even though Judas betrayed Jesus, Peter also denied Jesus. However, when Peter tells the story, he tells it as if Judas' betrayal is elevated above his denial. But if we really want to move forward to where God needs us to be, with who God needs us to be with, if we're not honest with anybody else, we have to start with being honest with ourselves. Because truth be told, we have not always been saints. We have not always done right. We have not always been on the path we're on now. So who are we to offer stories full of someone else's mistakes without the willingness to disclose our own? Who are we to judge anybody when the only difference between us and them is the fact that they got caught and we did not? Don't you see? Don't you see how how can we build a case against anybody when our lives are a crash course on grace? And this is the most beautiful part. God, you had grace for us. Even when we didn't have grace for ourselves, you elevated us when we should have been demoted. You trusted us when we showed ourselves to be untrustworthy. You loved us when it was hard for us to love ourselves. And see, that's that's why God sent Judas to Peter. Because when God sent Judas to us, Judas teaches us to have grace for those who may not deserve it. But I don't want us to beat up on ourselves or to beat up on Peter. Because trust me, I understand Peter. I really do. Out of all the disciples, he's 
sits in the toughest seat. After all, whenever we talk about the disciples, he was considered the leader of the 12. And when you're considered the leader, you have the propensity to want to come off as perfect. You want to blot any of your blemishes that people could expose. You would rather wash away the worst thing you've ever done. You want to believe that you're better than your worst blunder. But the danger in not disclosing your deficiencies, especially when you're Peter, is that you can begin to highlight everyone else's around you. Ah, but when you can be secure in your own story, when you can come to terms with your own faults and your own failures and your own mistakes and your own mishaps and your own trials and your own tribulations, then and only then will you understand that where you are going and who you are going with isn't because of your greatness, but it is because of God's grace. Understand, beloved. You weren't given the assignment and assigned allies because of your merit. But it is the gift of God's mercy that allows you to move forward. Because on your journey, you are going to have a Peter. You're going to have a Judas. You're going to have a Matthias. And when Peter shows up and Judas reveals himself, and when Matthias is on the way, I want you to remember that Peter and Judas and Matthias are all answered prayers from the true and living God. Don't you remember, before Jesus chose the twelve, he prayed all night so he could choose the right people because who was going with him was just as important as where God needed him to go. And out of that prayer came Judas who would betray him and Peter who would deny him. And so if Jesus prayed and received betrayal and if he prayed and received denial then why do we believe we won't receive the same when we pray to God about the people in our lives because when Peter shows up Peter is going to deny 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 and when Judas shows up Judas is going to betray 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 and when Matthias shows up you don't know what Matthias may do or what he may not do but as long as you know God is orchestrating your where that God is also orchestrating your who so when Peter denies let him deny you into your destiny when Judas betrays let him betray you into your blessing and when you don't know what Matthias may do you can trust the God who sent Matthias to you because because all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, whoever denies, whoever betrays, whoever left you alone, whoever threw you to the side, whoever didn't give you a chance, whoever talked behind your back, whoever put everybody against you because God will, God will, God will take care of you. God will. God will. God will. Even though it's one week after the resurrection, I want you to know that God will. The things that God said God would do, God will make it happen. No matter what's up against you and no matter who God may send your way, God will take care of you. Amen. Amen. 
Would you join us in standing? Don't know where you're going or don't know who you're going with. I pray that you know that you want to go to heaven, that your soul eternally will rest with God in heaven. At this time, we would like to extend the invitation for those who want to accept Christ today and this God who will take care of you. Don't know what you've, what's gone on in the past, but he will take care of you. Whatever you're going through today, God will take care of you. Best believe in your future. You're going to face some things. God will take care of you. If there's anyone here today who would like to be in the right relationship with God, have accepted Christ as their Savior, you believe that he died on that Friday, but he got up for your soul to save your soul. Come now. If there is one that would like to get back into relationship with this church, there have been many that throughout the week or after church service, they come up and they say they want to be reinstated here at Greencastle. You can come now or believe me, we are here to accept you after church. Or if there is someone out there you just, you can't handle it by yourself. You need someone else to help you well, well. during this time to pray with you. You can come now and we will pray with you over whatever situation it is. Because again, God will take care of you. So as our choir sings, if there's anyone that would like to come, please come. If you're watching online, there's information for you to contact us and we will walk you through the process of accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen.
as we prepare for communion. As we prepare for communion, it is heavy on my heart that there are some of us who may be dealing with a Judas or dealing with a Peter or God may have sent us our Matthias and we won't even give Matthias a chance because of what we've experienced from our Judas or because of what we've experienced from our Peter. And so as we go to the Lord's table, I want you to hold that person in your heart. Because the wrong prayer is praying that they'll go away. But the right prayer is praying that God would help you recognize what they are to do in your life. And so with that being said, as the deacons continue to pass out the elements, let us pray. Gracious God, we have prayed unto you asking that you would send us the right people. Asking that you would send us folks with the right heart. And that you would also send us people with the right intentions. And Lord, some way, somehow, we still got Judas. Some way, somehow, we still got Peter. And Lord, it is not up to us to judge. But Lord, it is up to us to trust that you have sent them in our lives for a reason. Lord God, help us to be tethered closer unto you in the days going ahead. Lord God, help us to heal from the trauma that would keep us from giving people a chance. Lord God, help us to tear down the defensive walls that some of us may have built up, oh God, that keeps us from being in ripe and good relationships. Lord, help us. Reach down unto us. Help us to have the same mind that Jesus Christ had at that faithful table. Because, Lord, Jesus knew that somebody was going to deny him. He knew that somebody was going to betray him. And yet, even with knowing what he knew, he still chose to have the supper with them anyhow. And Lord God, perhaps that is what it means to be a Christian. That being a Christian isn't about how well we can love you. But it's about how well can we love those who are against us. So Lord God, help us to rise to the same standard that Jesus had. Help us to be disciples, oh God, to take seriously, oh God, what it is that you have called us to do. And Lord, that part of loving our neighbor as ourselves is loving those who we may find hard to love. And so, God, as we continue forward, as we meditate on the communion song that will be ministered, Lord, let us remember your blood that was shed for those who were even against you, that was shed for those who pinned you on the cross, that was shed for those who spat on you and mocked you, that was shed for those who didn't even believe that you were who you said you were. Lord God, we thank you for the blood that does not discriminate. And we thank you for the blood that does not have a favorite. For your blood sees us all as equals because it has covered us all as equals. And that's in Jesus Christ's holy and matchless name that we pray. Amen and amen.
His power. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, take and eat for this is my body. And I believe in his mind, he also said, this is my body, which is broken for Judas. This is my body, which is broken for Peter and my body, which is also broken for you. So often as you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. Let us all eat together. In like manner, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And I believe in his mind, he also said that this is my blood that is shed for those who caused it to flow. And so often as you drink of this cup, because it was also shared for you, do so in remembrance of me. Let us all drink together. And then Jesus said, I will no longer drink of this fruit of the vine until I do so anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. At this time, I will call forth Sister Robin Witherspoon as she gives us an installation weekend announcement. So Sister Witherspoon, would you please come forward? Amen. everybody. T minus seven days. <laughs> we are looking forward to everyone attending Pastor Waite's installation service on Saturday, April the 13th at 11 a.m. with our special guest preacher, Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock. And just a few things to know about Saturday. Please carpool or ride share if possible. The parking lot will fill up fast. There will be off-site parking. The doors will open at 10 a.m., so please arrive early. The installation service will be streamed on our various streaming channels, and this event is a free event. The celebration will continue with guest preacher Reverend Dr. Willie Francois III, and worship service will begin at 11 a.m. This portion of the announcement is for members who have registered for the Sunday Fellowship Dinner. The registration for the Sunday Fellowship Dinner has closed. For those who will attend, please check your email for information about attending the dinner. If any ministries, families, or individuals who plan to present a gift to Pastor Waite and his family, please let Brother Steve Niffley know before, before Saturday, April the 13th. These gifts, the gifts presentation will be made on Sunday during the fellowship dinner. Again, no pressure, but we are asking everyone to wear green on Sunday. Please join us to celebrate this new beginning. Same God, a new thing. And if you have any questions, please see any member of the installation team. Thank you. Amen. Amen. At this time, I have a very special announcement to make to the church. Uh, and before I make it, I do want to let everybody know that when I first got to Greencastle Baptist Church, there was a vacancy that needed to be filled. Uh, the vacancy was for the Minister of Ministries position. And so what I did was I took the Minister of Ministries position and we shifted it into becoming now the Executive Pastor position. 
And we casted a wide net, long and wide. I'm just playing. We didn't cast, cast a wide net. But once, once I got here and I realized certain things that we needed as a church, it was very obvious who needed to be in that position. And so if Reverend Chelsea Wade, if you would, please come forward. So I say that to say that Reverend Chelsea Waite will now be serving as our executive pastor here at Green Castle Baptist Church. Can we praise God for sending Reverend Chelsea our way as well? Amen. And, and, and let me be crystal clear. She is overly qualified for this position. A graduate of Spelman College, she also has her Master of Divinity from the McAfee School of Theology at Mercer University. Uh, she was an executive assistant for the Spelman College deans during her time at Spelman College. Also a teaching assistant for preaching at Emory University Candler School of Theology. She is overqualified. And so can we praise God one last time? And I invite you after service to join us in the back so that you can congratulate Reverend Chelsea on her new calling here at the Green Castle Baptist Church. Amen. 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 And so with that being said, if you would, please stand if you are able. And hold the hand sitting next to you. As we prepare to exit this place, but never God's presence. Receive now this benediction. Gracious God, you have been more gracious unto us than we could ever imagine. Lord, you sent a tornado our way, but your presence covered us. And so, Lord, as we leave this place today, let us not leave feeling like life is guaranteed. But, Lord, let us leave today knowing that it is but an honor and a privilege. And it is but a decision that you made that allows us to continue to live day after day after day. And so, Lord, as we depart this place, let us never depart your presence. As we depart this place, oh God, let us never depart your grace. Let us never depart your mercy. But most importantly, oh God, let us never depart your peace. And that's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen and amen.
Welcome family and friends to Greencastle and thank you for joining us in person and online. These are your morning announcements and it's a new year and there's a new day to keep on your calendar. Noon day Bible study will now be on Wednesday. This will be a permanent change. So join us every Wednesday at noon and at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study. Also, join us for the men's Bible study every second Saturday at 9 a.m. and the women's Bible study every third Saturday at 11 a.m. More information can be found on the church website at www.greencastle.org on the events page. And if you find yourself in need of prayer, please go to our website and on the homepage, look for the prayer request tab to submit your prayer requests to the church office. And for those wanting to join, you can now go online on the homepage and select I want to join to become a member of Green Castle. And we invite everyone to join us in celebrating a new chapter at Green Castle Baptist Church. Mark your calendars for April 13th through the 14th to be a part of the pastoral installation of the Reverend Darian A. Waite. Join us with our special guests, which will include the Reverend Raphael G. Warnock of Ebenezer Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia, at the installation service on Saturday, April 13th at 11 a.m. Then join us on Sunday, April 14th at 11 a.m. for worship service with our guest speaker, the Reverend Dr. Willie Francois III of Fountain Baptist Church in Summit, New Jersey. You can now go to the church events page to find information on how to register via the Eventbrite link. And due to an expected large crowd, we kindly ask two car families to attend in one vehicle and encourage all attendees to carpool as much as possible. Same God, a new thing. We cannot wait to celebrate with you. In church family, we are so blessed to be celebrating our 155th year as a church. Join us for our church anniversary on Sunday, April 28th at 11 a.m. as we celebrate our church anniversary with Reverend James R. Pitts as our guest speaker. Be the Church is our theme and we encourage and ask everyone to wear green on that Sunday. We hope to see you at the celebration. And are you willing to serve? The ushers ministry is in need of volunteers. We are also in need of youth volunteers to join us on the second Sunday for Youth Sunday to usher. If you are interested at all in participating in this ministry, please contact Brother David Wills. And last month, we observed the National Autoimmune Disease Awareness Month with events hosted by our Greencastle Health Ministry. Please stop by in the hallway today to take the quiz on all the information learned during the month and for a chance to win a prize. If you missed the event last month, then there is a recap video on the church website. And we extend the invite to everyone to join us every Tuesday at 8.15 p.m. via Zoom for our online prayer call. Information can be found on the church website on the events page on how to join the Zoom call. Now we will worship through giving. There are several ways to give. You can give online by going to www.greencastle.org or if you are in person today, there are designated baskets at the back of the church where you can place your offering upon entering and exiting the worship center. Additionally, you may drop off your offering 
during church business hours during the week. These conclude our morning announcements. Have a blessed day, church family. Thank you for viewing the Green Castle Baptist Church, the Church Under the Cross online worship experience. We pray that you have been blessed by our ministry. Green Castle Baptist Church is located at 4970 Murphy Lane in Louisville, Kentucky. Visit us again and please view our other services on our website at www.greencastle.org. May the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer.